Today I will show you how to DIY build an energy storage system in the easiest way, you don't even have the electrical skills to build it. Only need 3 steps, buy the battery, choose the inverter, and wire them up, then it's done. I built my energy storage system in May 2022. It has been running for a year, in this period, a short power outage and servo grid unstable happened, but the system worked like charm. I didn't feel any interruption when the grid had a problem. Let's talk about how to build a DIY energy storage system. Before you start choosing all the parts, you should decide what situation and how long you will need the system. For me, the ESS was for my room's computer and network equipment. I want my ESS can automatically kick in immediately when a power outage happened and run for over 12 hours. The first step, buy the battery. I recommend 48 volt server rack Li FIPO 4 battery. Why Li FIPO 4 battery? Lithium iron phosphate battery is safer than the lithium ion battery and has a much longer life than acid lead battery. Why 48 volts? 48 volts is more efficient and safer than 24 or 12 volts for many reasons. Why server rack? The server rack battery is more compact and easy to scale up if needed. Another reason is server rack batteries usually got better quality and better BMS compared to a normal battery. On the market, there are various 48 volt server rack batteries. I choose the model name SK48V100. The SOC 48 volts 100 a server rack battery, because the SOC brand has a good reputation in DIY solar groups, and it was budget friendly. The second step, choose the inverter. Based on my requirements, I need an all-in-one inverter slash charger that supports DC 48 volts batteries, outputs 110 volts AC, and has the ATS feature, that filters out a lot of options. After some research, I choose the MPP Solar 3048 LV MK model for my inverter, it can fit all my requirements and can add solar panels if I want. Why MPP Solar? This company has a good reputation for DIY users and the customer service is quite good. Most of the time you can get their response in one business day, and the reply is friendly. For example, I asked a question, and MPP Solar's service team not only answered my question but also gave me a photo and showed me where the location was. The last step, wire them up. To this step, you should already have some plan for your energy storage system. For me, I will go with the minimum setup, and make my ESS as a backup power system, like giant UPS. I need two AC cables. One is for the inverter AC input that connects to the utility, I bought an open-end power core from Amazon. The other is for the inverter's AC output, which powers my computer and networking equipment. I bought a generator extension cord for the power load. For DC, I need a pair of battery cables to connect the inverter and the battery. If you have the proper tools to cut thick copper wire, crimp connectors, and heat seal, you can do this yourself. I don't have the right tools to make battery cables, but luckily a company can do it for me. I ordered my battery cables from batterycablesusa.com. Just choose the right wire size and length, then wait for it to be delivered to you. Be careful using the right size wire for safety. You can check your local electrical code to find out what size you should use. The wiring part is pretty easy. My AC cable needs some stripping slash cutting work. Then follow the manual to connect to the inverter. DC wires are pre-made. Match the color with positive slash negative. Connect the battery and the inverter. After making sure everything is screwed tight, power up the battery first then the inverter. It should work. That's all for today's video. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn more you can visit DIYSolarForum.com for more information. I learn a lot from there. If you like this video, don't forget like and subscribe.